need to make a truth table and so let's do that so we're going to put p, q, p's and q's are called, they're called our variable statements I call them components and other people call them various other things they have other names but I'm going to say components most of the time so we're going to look at our components and so the first thing we need to do is we need to know that it's always going to go one half of this so what's one half of that what's so is one one half one fourth and so that's how we're we're going to label our truth value and so I'm going to get right into it right now and so from going down we need to know how many rows we have and so to be able to tell how many rows we have we use this equation it's going to be 2n and so what's the n stand for? n stands for our variable statements which are p and q or components and so we have two components so now I'm going to label it and so after this following problem I want I'm not going to do this anymore but this is just in case someone's new to doing this then I'm going to break it down to the very fundamental basics alright so now we understand that and so now we go back over here so this what's this all mean right here so this has an equation too this equation we go like this it's 1 divided by 2 over n and what's our n? our variable statement and so you could clearly see the the pattern right here why it's going 1 half 1 fourth and so now we're gonna uh, figure out what this all means so there's gonna be four four roads and that's what all we need to know right now so and when we make truth tables we gotta go by T and F and T and F stand for true and false so let's get right into it and so why did I put one half because half of these are going to be true 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 false false and so if I were to add these up right one and two that makes three and four so two out of four gives me one half one and two that gives me one half alright so let's get on to this next one and so why does it say one fourth well we say one fourth because we're gonna go like this one out of four of them is gonna be true so we're gonna say true false true false you follow you're following what I said so it's gonna be one fourth so every one fourth of this and so this is one fourth of it and I'll label it a different color so that's one fourth and then this is one fourth, right? And then this is one fourth, and so we're we're changing um, the order. So this one's gonna be one fourth, one fourth for true, then false, then one fourth true and false, and then one fourth false, right? And same thing right here, right? We're gonna go one half. So that's one. That's two. That makes one half, right? I hope you're following me. So these two are one half, halfway done with it, and then one and two, and then that's half, half of the whole truth table. So that's what this stands for. This is the number of the truth values we're going to give it. And so I hope you guys understand that. And now we're going to jump right into it. And so I'm not going to do that anymore so the next problems are going to be a lot faster so we have P and Q and now we gotta put down our state compound statements so P and Q are statement variables so these are statements these are compound statements P and Q and so is Q and P that's a compound statement too alright so th this is read P and Q and so we have P and Q and so if we remember our definition 
it means that both the statements have to be true in order for our compound statement to be true. And so that's both true. One's true, one's false, so it has to be false. One's false, one's true, so it has to be false because remember we said we both have to be true, and this is both false, so it's obviously false. And now we go to Q and P, and we can see that's true. And it follows like this it's false, false, false. And so that's all going to be false. And so there's always a pattern to these kind of things, these truth tables. And so we finish this portion of this one proof. We have another proof over there. And so when you finish your proof, you got a um, state that you finish. So I'm going to put thus. So this three signs means thus. We proved. And then you go write out the following, right? You write out your um, your whole entire sentence. So when you finish your statement, that's known as your sentence. So this is going to be a sentence if I were to write it, give meaning to my variables. And if you don't know what that means, I highly suggest you go watch my other videos. I go really thorough into the concept behind this. And so there you go. We proved this first one. And so it was this is sufficient. We prove P and Q is and these three little symbols mean logically equivalent. So logically equivalent. And so I'm just put E Q U equivalent. And so this is sufficient enough for our um our proof for our conclusion. So we conclude it, we prove P and Q is logically equivalent to Q and P. And you could have probably said thus P and Q are logically equivalent to Q and P. It just depends on your professor and how they want it to be thoroughly written out. So I'm not critiquing how you do it. That's more of what you have to worry about how your professor wants you to do it. And so now I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one a little faster. So this is going to be P and Q. And so we have two variable statements. That's 2 to the squared, which gives us 4. So it's going to be true, true, false, false, right? Because um, it's going to be 1 half and 1 half. And then it's going to be 1 fourth and 1 fourth. True, false, true, false. And so when you get good at these, you notice that there's a pattern. And there's no right, one, right way to write this. But I highly suggest you write it the way I I write it because then you be able to do it more efficiently, and so this is the most efficient way. And this you write it backwards: false, false, true, true. And I I'm not opposed to that, but that's whatever you want to do. And so we prove this for the end statement. And so what's the sign meaner here? This means end, right? We prove this for the end statement. Now we're going to prove this for the or statement. And so let's do that. So we gotta put out our compound statements down, slash sentences. And then we look at our truth table and then we look at it and it says true. So if one or the other is true, then the statement is true, right? So this one's true, this one's true, 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 these are both true. And so that's true, and this are both false, so it has to be false. And this one's true, 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 false. And so now we gotta conclude our sentence. We say, or conclude our proof, and we say, thus P or Q is logically equivalent to Q or P. And so that's just the same as this over here in terms of how we um, proved it. So 